Children's curiosity can drive them to the heights of achievement, but it can also push them beyond the boundaries of what is safe, as Renee Durschel discovered on June 23, 1995, at her home in Boynton Beach, Florida. I was cleaning because I had the real estate coming over to see the house. My two kids were running around the house playing with one of the neighbor kids. Hey, kids, let's go outside and play. And I told them to go outside and stay outside. Eight-year-old Crystal, seven-year-old Billy, and their friend Garrett Barry went out into the front yard. They're like my best friends. Crystal said that there was a big bird nest up there and I wanted to see it. Probably about 15, 20 minutes later, there was a knock on the door. Hello? You know your kids are in the tree? No. I didn't think anything of it then. Where at? He says, no, look up. Oh, my God. Help! Help! Don't move. Stay still. And I knew how brittle those branches were. I didn't even know how the heck they got up that high without them all breaking on them. I didn't want them to take a chance of trying to climb down. Renee immediately called Garrett's mother, Lisa. I opened up the front door and looked, oh my God, call and I saw where they were. And that's when I said, oh, God, call 911. I'm on my way down. Point Beach 911, how can I help you? We have three children that are up at the very top of the pine tree in my front yard, and they can't get down. <laughs> I can't. They're about 60 feet up, and I can't get them down. Don't move! Okay, we're on the way, okay? All right. Bye-bye. Boynton Beach fire rescue units were immediately dispatched, including firefighter paramedic Jim Herrick. In Norfolk Pine Tree, it's not a climbing tree. Having three children in a tree, it's a very unstable environment. That's, that's what uh, excited all of us. Crystal, you stay still. Talk to each other. Don't look down here. And Billy, look at Garrett and talk to him. Don't move, Crystal. I didn't really notice the danger. And so I saw the branch fall beneath Crystal. And then I got scared because I saw the branches were fragile that they could fall out of the tree. Within three minutes, an engine company arrived, led by Lieutenant Bob Richardson. Man, look at those kids up there. Just after we made the turn, I looked down the street and I said, holy cow, these guys are up in 60 feet in that tree. And how they get up there, I'll never know. Dispatch the aerial code tree. We have the engineer. I knew we couldn't climb the tree because I know the characteristics of the tree. It's a... Uh, so brittle that, you know, one branch snaps and the whole thing comes down. Just said to myself, this is beyond the scope of an engine company. We need the aerial apparatus in here to get these kids out of this tree. How about you and Jeff? Uh, give us a advantage. Crystal, she didn't have anything to hold on to. She couldn't get herself turned around. I was getting scared. The aerial truck company arrived with a hundred-foot ladder. The whole picture changed from standing on the ground to once I got up next to the children. Our initial plan was just reach out, grab the kids, pull them in. And uh, I said, that plan is definitely not going to work. In fact, we have to the branches off. There's branches between us and them, and I didn't want to disturb anything. We might lose a kid. The possibility of losing one of your children, not being able to do anything about it, it's a hard thing to deal with, especially when he's yelling down to you, Mommy, can you help me? Fortunately, firefighter Gail Coey, who had high angle rescue training, was at the station that day. And my officer said, do you think you can do this? And I said, well, I'm sure going to try. They were in the tip top of the tree. I mean, I was impressed. I used to climb trees when I was a kid, and they were up there. We had to be extremely careful that we didn't disturb the branches that the children were sitting and standing on. And one mistake, and they would have fallen. Well, my name's Gail, and I'm going to get you right out of there, okay? The concern was the storms coming in, and I know there's a, you know, a lot of lightning comes with storms. You had this 60, 70-foot tree sticking up in the air. It's like a lightning rod. And it's the highest tree around, so I just wanted them out of that tree. This was going to take a little finesse, and we're, we're going to have to just take our time and safety the children off in a sit harness and bring them in one at a time. 
Renee's husband, Bill, came home from work as soon as he heard about the situation. I didn't even want to think about if one of the kids fell and what was going to happen. There would be no second chances. That would have been it. Down and grab me around the neck. Okay, I've got you. I was afraid that we were falling when the tree was shaking. Good boy. Okay. How are you doing, sweetie? Good. Well, you can face me just a little bit. Okay. Crystal was a little panicky. She really wasn't in a real secure position. Time seemed crucial. Okay. Now. I've got a hold of you, and you're all locked in. So, what I want you to do... Okay, I got Billy out. Put it right under my shoulders, okay? There we go. Good girl. Garrett was the farthest away from the bucket. I had to get out, go outside and climb into the tree myself. All right, you're on your own, Gail. Being small has a few advantages. Okay. Now, you saw what I did to your friends, right? I'm going to put this around your... Yes, get him? You got him. Okay. Look, look, look. Okay. Yeah. I can remember them putting Garrett into the bucket and lowering it and the relief that I felt as they were coming down. We've always kept the branches high on that tree. My husband's purposely cut them off because they do climb trees. But we never physically told the children not to climb that tree because I never thought they would in my wildest dreams. We just went up from my sister's bike and got one branch by one and we climbed. And when we got up there, we couldn't get down because all the branches were breaking. I wanted to go short, and I thought, and, but I went all the way up, and I didn't know until I looked down, and then I was scared. They started to go down, and then that's when the branches started to break under Crystal's feet. I just started hoping that, that Crystal wouldn't fall. I think the fireman did a really good job, and I thank him very much. Crystal told me she'd never climb a tree again. Which is like, honey, I know you're gonna climb a tree again, but let's not make it that high. 